uh, which is called Sismic. He's going to talk to you about it. And uh, Loic is a very famous French serial entrepreneur. Uh, he launched uh, four different companies, internet related companies that he sold. Um, he graduated from HEC, which is a business school in France. He is the number one blogger in France. What's interesting about Loic also is that uh, last year he supported uh, uh, the French president uh, Sarkozy for his election. And uh, there's a lot of uh, controversy about it and you know the blogging uh, and politics mixing together. Um, and uh, one more thing about Loic before I turn it to him. Uh, he was also, uh, the, he was, uh, he actually every year he's putting together the biggest web conference in Europe. So I think the last one happened last month. And he had like people like Kevin Rose, uh, Philip Stark, Michael Arrington, and so on. So he's actually bringing the Silicon Valley to, uh, to Europe uh, once a year, uh, which is pretty imp impressive. And he's also the chairman of uh, Six Apart. That's uh, kind of uh, what Loic does. And, and uh, without further ado, please wait. Thank yes, you thank you. It's, it's a pleasure uh, to be with you for, uh, for an hour. And let's, uh, uh, Romain, thank you for this introduction, which is, of course, way exaggerated. Mm -hmm. But um, happy to, to be here with you. Let's make it as interactive as possible. I guess you made an introduction. Maybe I can, I can say a few words about uh, what I'm doing now. Um, before, uh, before we start, but I'm launching a, uh, a company called Sismic, S-E-S-M-I-C, -E here, and it's a video conversation. Hopefully it's showing here, but, um, but the, the principle is very simple. From like uh, blogging since uh, 2003, I've enjoyed probably like most of you. Who is blogging here or reading blogs? Everybody, right? Blogging too? You're all blogging? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and so I've been enjoying a lot of the conversations we get there. And I've been willing to, I mean, the, the, the need is, is quite obvious to me. Is like there isn't such a conversation in video. It, in text, it's very interesting what you get on social software, what you get on blogs, but not in video. And most of my friends, my community, they don't watch TV much, if not at all. Or it's like sometimes they do. And um, YouTube is not a conversation. I don't see it as a conversation. It's more like enabling the long tail and people posting in there. Um, and TV is not a conversation, or at least not a conversation with uh, the audience. And so this is why we launched this. Uh, oh, you have two screens? OK. And um, if you know, uh, of course, you all know about Twitter, I guess, right? And so it, it's seen in the market as a Twitter of video as we launch it. Because you, as you can see, you have a public timeline here where uh, all the, so the screen is much uh, nicer. It's just cut right now. It's all the last posts of people. So you see just now, it's actually like live two minutes ago, three minutes ago. And if, if you click on anybody's uh, video, for example, this guy is talking about Sismic versus TV, or uh, we can check uh, this one. You click, and you get, of course, the person uh, uh, talking to you. In, uh, um, and uh, we have about to give you, so this is like stealth, I mean, open stealth mode. Oh, we even have some. Um, the company has been launched three months ago. We have uh, opened 3,000 uh, accounts. So it's very tiny right now. We're building it with the people, which is something you might find interesting, is uh, as I have a community around my blog, I said maybe we should, uh, the best way to deliver a product that people like is to build it with them. So I started blogging about this idea, um, and people started picking up on it. And uh, I said, you look, what we'll do is we'll entirely build it with you, with the community. And so we have, a, for example, a, a feature request button. We got 600 feature requests. We had so many that we said, we'll make you vote on it, <laughs> if you want. And people started voting on it. So if they are my CTO, if you will. I have a CTO, but they started uh, deciding what should be the product. And we get so much that uh, we have troubles to follow, actually, uh, what, what's going to be built inside the tool. But uh, the way we, we grow it is exactly like this. It's also supported by, it's too bad, this resolution. I, I am a big believer in transparency and building with, uh, with people. So what we, what we do as well is a, tells me we have uh, something else wrong. So because it's cut here, anyway. Too much uh, people on Mac, on my company. They don't use PCs anymore. <laughs> but so you can see there is a timeline here. 
um, which you can uh, which you can follow with people posting. They just post using a webcam, so I don't have a webcam in this one, but you just uh, uh, press the, the red button and you record a video. So it's all about people talking to each other. Um, and on the right, which you don't see if you click on uh, any video, uh, there is a uh, following followers button. So you see who is following the person and who uh, is following uh, that, that person. <coughs> and what's very interesting, in we, we have some, so some numbers. We have 3,000 passwords which gave out because we want to scale, so we do it very slowly with video. Uh, 1,500 people use it every day. And 1,500 people post about 2,000 videos a day. So it's more than one per user. So it's very, very active. We have 20 countries in already uh, with that few number of uh, users. Um, and there's a profile here um, where you see Chantilly, this guy's in France, but it's from, uh, you click to the next one, it's like Sydney, Australia, a lot. 60% is from the US. For, for a French guy, I'm happy about that, of course, being here. Uh, we have a very big uh, London community as well, Germany. Italy started as we got a, a big feature on an Italian show yesterday, TV show. Um, and um, the way, what I was saying, and then I'll, I'll ask uh, questions if you have some, is the other thing we have is a, um, see these updates right now as we speak, there are two more that arrived. Um, so it's like video blogging. And uh, it's very, uh, so there is also, there are, I don't, there are conversations which happen in there which are uh, very, very rich. For example, um, I was sitting in front of a L'Oréal uh, head of internet worldwide, who's a friend of mine, Georges Edouard Diaz, in, uh, at the CES two days ago. And uh, we opened Sysmic and I started posting a video which I wanted to do with you too. But unfortunately, my Mac is offline. Um, and uh, I wanted to, and so we said, how would you integrate a brand within Sysmic? Because most of the Sysmic members don't like marketing. And they don't want marketing. They don't, do, they don't want any advertising in there. So we started to ask, <coughs> would you like a brand like L'Oreal in Sysmic, and how would you do it? And we got about 25 answers in like an hour of people saying, that's actually great. We actually had a lot of women and girls saying, we'd like uh, makeup, makeup classes. We'd like samples. And for this, we'll give you feedback. So it's like a focus group. And this was coming from about 10 countries. So in an hour, he had feedback from uh, 20 countries. Last thing, so we have a daily show, uh, which, uh, which uh, because I thought, you know, launching a video company, I had to use it myself. <laughs> Would be a good idea. So there, we do a video every day, which is public, because YouTube, oh, YouTube does the same. So that's, see, that's reassuring, because YouTube does the same stuff with your browser. So I don't know what's wrong with this browser. Uh, so that's yesterday's show. And what I do is uh, I tell everybody everything I do every day. <laughs> this is why you have wit here, who is, uh, if you don't mind, like uh, recording. You should take over shots, wit, if you stay here. I'm, I'm the most boring guy. So you know, when, when we have a conversation, if you disagree, tell me as well, right? And so that was yesterday from Vegas. I took myself, I had a small camera. I don't have wit, the luxury of wit following me always. So I was in Vegas and I took my small camera. This was during the keynote speech of Gates, or just before. Uh, then I showed people what I saw and what I learned, people I met. Um, and we do that every single day since the beginning of a company. I thought it would be a cool idea since I, I was in Europe for 15 years, created my startup sphere. Moving here, I didn't know that many people, a few good ones, like a few friends, but not that many. Doing this would help me get connected. And um, we did uh, 61 of them. This is six week, day 61, 61. And if you go to uh, videos, you can see uh, all of them. So it, it, it's really like a lot of content already. And the first one, uh, which is the, see the, like the first one ever. <laughs> is this one. I was alone showing people I had only the office. And there is like me, the office, no employees. And I'm introducing myself. I'm saying, you know, will ever somebody here want to work for a French guy? Um, and I hired half of a company from those videos. Just yesterday, I hired a, a 20 years experienced developer uh, in Philadelphia, who is amazing. 
from the videos. He's watched all of them and he said, look, I have, you know, I like you guys. So, so you can see this is the office unfinished in San Francisco and everything is empty. There is not even a desk. The day after, you see me at IKEA buying furniture. <laughs> so it's like a startup, you know, from day one to, and we already now have, we have 10 people. We are, you see, it's like, there's nothing. Um, you have, uh, I, I'll show you just one more and I, and I shut up, but this is, uh, this is fun. Uh, or I open to questions. But there is one that is really, really fun. It's um, introducing my partner. So let me introduce you my, my partner. Do you know how I can increase the sound, uh, Romain? Yeah. The vision of Sismic is a content company. It starts with a video conversation, but I need somebody who knows content, high quality. Like, <laughs> so this is my partner Cyril, he's like, we don't, you know, like he's, he's like VP officially, but so what he does is content, you know, right? And so what we do is, the reason he's here, so he's a TV guy in France, he's the most famous video blogger. Uh, and uh, what he does is he, he takes content from Sismic, gets the conversations, and the fo very um, uh, focused ones on, on one topic, we do shows with them. Like, for example, running. If you like, if you're into running, into running, you know, like either casually to lose weight like me or uh, running marathons, there is a seismic running club. Imagine we start doing a five minutes daily, very edited show from 20 people around the world about running. And then we get ASICs and Nike sponsor it because they're very interested. Of course, it's extremely targeted. That's what we do on seismic. So it's like building a CNN of your friends. And uh, the show now is seen by about 6,000 people a day every single day. So it's like we're building this company with 6,000 people. And each time we need something, we ask them. And they can ask anything, business model, competition, whatever. We ask, answer the day after. And uh, I hired half of a company through this uh, video. That's it. <laughs> Maybe we can open a conversation, I hope, because otherwise I'll talk all the time, which I don't want to. Any questions, reactions, insults, criticism? <laughs> yeah? Why did you decide to that's a very good point. So um, uh, I've created four companies in, uh, in Europe, uh, in France, and I, I went from very local, like if you start in France or in Europe, the problem is that you have in mind what surrounds you. So you speak in French all day long. You, uh, you're very, um, of course, local in, uh, in the way you think because you go to lunch for two hours with Parisians, and it sets you in a mindset which I'm not saying it's bad, I love French food and so on, but you are in a local atmosphere. So you think local, you meet local journalists. And I had press there, but it's like local, right? And everything is local, local, local. So you target 60 million people. And then by the time you've set a success in France, say, there is an American company that has 300 million as a target, as a natural market, that doesn't have 22 languages to go through in Europe second problem, who is 10 times your size, and which comes in Europe or either buys you or kills you. That's like the uh, very, very sad uh, news, is that I think you can, so it's not as easy to raise capital, even though we're funded, so I didn't tell you that, but we raised $6 million from uh, uh, Niklas Zenstrom and, and Janus Fries, the two Skype founders, and uh, I added to these 10 business angels, uh, American, so Steve Case, Ron Conway, who invested in uh, Google, I think, on this campus, uh, and other uh, people, that uh, Reid Hoffman of LinkedIn, who introduced me to many people here. I needed that. But so the problem is you don't have this. So 22 languages, small market, you, very difficult to get to a critical size. Uh, and when you, when you may reach this size, then it's too late, usually. So I did that four times. <laughs> And I mean, it was quite successful. I mean, I made some money and so on. I'm happy. But I thought the, I should do international, something you know, global. And I started by blogging last. Uh, so I started one of the first blogging company called Ublog in Europe. And I realized I would never be able to compete with the US. So I merged with Six Apart and became the head of Six Apart Europe. But so the blogging company. But in this case, you're still, I was still the head of a subsidiary, right? And that's like, you know, frustrating. 
So, so this one, I wanted global, and I said, let's move to the center, which is here, and I'm very happy so far. Um, very happy. It's, it's challenging, but it's, uh, it's interesting. I mean, I have three boys, I have three kids, so my, my wife came, so it's a big move. Yeah. Any other? Yeah. Um, I'm just curious. Are Take the room with, not only me. We're doing this sort of conversation that's based on video. Yeah. And that's very different from text conversations, primarily for me, because text sort of gives you a sense of anonymity when you're actually typing things in, whereas this is more FaceTime. Yes. Uh, I'm just curious about how everyday people <coughs> react to that, uh, to the idea of being there being videos of them as opposed to text that they've like, how's the perception in the market? How yes, take that? there is tons uh, to be said about this, a lot uh, to be said. Because first, there is no anonymous, uh, nobody is anonymous, which is, sounds like nothing, but on a, on a forum you can take any identity. Of course, you can put yourself a mask or anything, but uh, it doesn't make sense. So don't, people don't do it. And so this provides a sense of intimacy with people, which, uh, People like, I actually asked this question on Sismic yesterday, saying, what do you think Sismic is for you? And I got like 30 answers uh, already, like in an hour or two. And people were saying, it's, what's striking is that it's you as you really are. Like if you go on TV, you have a set, you have a stage, you have lights, you have makeup, you don't feel comfortable because it's like weird, it's not your current atmosphere. Whereas here on Sismic, people sometimes Sismic from their bed, you know, not shaved, they wake up, they have not taken their coffee, they, uh, you know, it's like a different atmosphere. So it's being like people are really like they are on Sismic, and that's a big difference. Instead of, it's like blogging, you can't really fake it, right? If you're, you, you are exactly like you are. And so that creates uh, something interesting. The other thing, which is new, I think, which is provided by video, because you can't really cheat, right? You see the face, the gestures, you see if somebody has um, feelings, much more than on text which can cause problems. But. And uh, the other thing is they feel like they know each other already after two, three months. Because we are in a room together, which is a global room. That's the other thing that gave me the idea of Sismic, is I go to so many conferences in different countries in the world, and maybe I see Romain you know, in Germany, and I enjoy to meet Romain, and then I don't see him for a year. And so I wanted a link which goes above the countries, which is really global, and that can give me news about my friends all year long. And people appreciate this. So it's amazing how you can switch from somebody in Australia to somebody in Germany to somebody. So people like that a lot. And we had a language uh, button. So I started by, uh, uh, of course, mostly English. Um, so I started by mostly English. But you can see here we have, uh, uh, you can choose all the languages you want. And that's also something very unique. So you can, so I, I, I uh, when I was at university, I learned Russian, and I forgot. But so if you go, <laughs> yeah, it's not. But if you if you go and click only Russian, then you get everybody in Russian. It's very good for your language and so on. And um, it's very funny because all those people also speak English. So you have Italians speaking English, French speaking English, German speaking English. So it's a very weird. Uh, uh, environment. It's like the world is flat in you know uh, under your. Uh, yeah, I mean you can you can feel it in a way which I think is uh, is very new. I don't know this one for example, Massachusetts. Well, it's afternoon tea time, and I brewed myself a cup of Song Yang white tea. I don't think it has any caffeine in it, but that's okay. I've drunk about. I don't know, 10 cups of coffee today, so I need something. So you see, she's, she's in Massachusetts. You can see her followers mm -hmm. and who she's following, like on Twitter and Facebook. We're adding groups. So you can do, you can do like a business startup group on Sismic. And so that's another thing on your question. It's like this is very, very casual. People are not supposed to say serious stuff, right? It's like blogging. You say anything in your mind. So it can be about, uh, I don't know, there is a losing weight club. Uh, what's up? What's that? See, this guy is talking to me. This is the developer I, I hired yesterday. He's in Philadelphia. And you see, if you click uh, previous in Fred here, you go to the conversation. Hey there. So they're all talking about the same topic. You can go. to say that the week is doing a presentation that's going to start pretty soon. 
in <laughs> some time, maybe in five minutes, maybe in 25 minutes. Probably gonna ask you guys to say hello. So, <laughs> so I could not put my webcam up. So otherwise, I would have showed you. It would have been very fun because we would have had like 20 people saying hi to you, you know, from all around the world. And that is kind of. But unfortunately, I yeah, I don't have a connectivity here. Um, but so you see the point. And if I move here to the timeline, the friends timeline, oops, I see only people I'm following. So these are only my friends. Um, and uh, see, this one is in England. Hey, Trinity. Welcome to Seedwick. That's an interesting job you have there. Now, if only look, the owner of this. Um, and what's very, very fun is that uh, they all um, welcome new, be new buys by themselves. So he's not an employee, right? And he comes and welcomes everybody. So it's a very, very nice uh, community around that. Um, uh, so, sorry, do you have another question? Yeah. So, you being a serial entrepreneur, how different was this last experience compared to your first one, both from a network and raising capital and credibility point of view as well as execution? Yes. So, um, so I'm trying to learn from my mistakes and to learn from uh, uh, one experience to another. It's my fifth company. Uh, so I have. So raising funds was easy. I mean, I mean, I've raised those six million dollars. Uh, and you see the thing of having cameras, you have to be a little careful of what you say, but that's okay, everybody knows everything. But see, if I'm bullshitting you, <laughs> <laughs> imagine, I'll have like 20 comments tomorrow. <laughs> I may have my investor coming in and say, that's not right. Yeah. See, it's like this, this thing, which creates something interesting, I think. Anyway, so the answer is I've raised $6 million, mostly from a dinner, took an hour, with Niklas Enstrom, founder of Skype, co-founder. Why? Because I've known him from five years, and they are building Juist. They are visionaries. They are, I think, geniuses, Niklas and Janus. And I didn't really want to raise from VCs. I wanted to raise from entrepreneurs that wouldn't ask me a business plan that I don't know what it will be. Uh, for the, like, in Europe, for example, a lot of them focus on revenues. What will be your revenue model? Which is kind of obvious, but for this, you know, what can I say? I don't know. I have no idea. Whereas here, my feeling as a big difference is people focus much more like entrepreneurs on do you have traction, a community? And we have uh, 15,000 people in waiting list. See, that says <laughs> something which uh, uh, shows uh, interest. You go on Google blog search, search for Seismic, you'll see 4,000 blog posts, about 20 per day, people talking about Seismic because they feel something is happening. And that, for me, is better than the business plan. And Niklas understands this. So like they know what I burn every month, they have a budget, of course. But you know, the business, the revenue, I don't know. Subscription, uh, advertising, being very careful because otherwise I break it immediately if I put advertising. Um, uh, playing with brands, giving them focus group. Some companies want to do it uh, internally, use it internally. Some of them will teach classes in there. A human resource uh, headhunter is teaching a human resource class. And they probably will start charging. I don't know. Some of it free, some of it charging. So to answer your point, um, the big, big difference for me was uh, this easiness of doing it with entrepreneurs rather than VCs was a big factor. Uh, and I, I'm lucky. I mean, that like, it's not. So your first four companies were VCs? Right? Uh, not of all of them, no. I started on a, a campus of a school called HEC, a business school. Um, and I started with my student loan with uh, 50,000. Francs at the time, ten thousand euros, and uh, I had uh, I had I can't say I had no money, but I didn't have you know much, and that was everything I had. And I started with <laughs> customers. It was a, an agency business, so you could you could get revenues. I didn't know what the business angel was, and then I raised money. And I, I have to say I was quite disappointed by the so on my on, on one of the companies I raised as well money and with VCs. And I have to say, <laughs> this is difficult with the camera, but I have to say the, I was quite disappointed by the fact that they were asking me to spend too much time on business planning. Like, I mean, I was doing Excel spreadsheets all the time <laughs> to justify my decisions, right? Oh, and if you do this, what happens? And you know, it's like, let me do it, and then, you know. And so I think that's a big drawback. We may not have to this point here, but like, I was trying to document everything, and I, I felt like not raising from VCs for that reason. So I think we'll raise from VCs if we need to. I have $6 million, so that's OK. But in a year or so, 
um, but not at the beginning. So I learned that, but I didn't want VCs at the beginning, like friends, entrepreneurs. So I, I think you'd rather like have business angels putting a few hundred thousand on VCs. Then uh, I learned, what did I learn? I learned global was very important. So this is why I came here. I thought that uh, I could not do anything local anymore. Because otherwise, you'd, I mean, look at YouTube, for example. It's the same field, right? You had Daily Motion, Benjamin Beshbaum. Do you know Daily Motion? Yeah. Do you do? Oh, OK. Well, it's new then, because it was launched before YouTube. It's about 15 to 20% of the traffic of YouTube. So it's not bad. It's number one in Europe. They launched before. Everybody think it's a copycat from Europe. It's not. They launched before. And it's 20% uh, of the size to a maximum. They've not sold, right? The other one is, what, 1.6 billion to Google. Um, and honestly, it's really great. If you check it, it's really good. See? So uh, that's what I learned. If you want the maximum chances, but we are already here, so that's cool. Uh, then what I learned, um, it could go on for hours, but uh, trust my team as much as possible. I never ask, you know, they, they self, you know, I mean, the, there is no management almost. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's really like people self-manage themselves, and we are so transparent that I mean, people know it, people know everybody in my team because they are in video. So it's like they have the pressure that I have from the outside to them, and they feel exactly the same pressure. It's like if my CTO, like my CTO is on Sysmic all the time and all the time in video, and people tell him, you know, uh, this feature is missing, <laughs> you've not done that. That's the best boss in the world, right? Because he knows. <laughs> and if there's something wrong, they go after him. It's very... Interesting. So no management. Maybe when I move to the next question, otherwise I can go on on this. Sorry, you had one? Sure. Yeah. Uh, so first off, really cool site. Thank uh, you. I'd imagine as your site has been going, people are pushing for more and more private threads. Yes. Do you think private thread, are you, is that out, strategically out of line of Seismic, or is that a natural evolution of your community? How do you view private threads? I think it's natural. It's just that we have not been able to implement it yet. Because of us, uh, oh, actually, I have, it, I have it here. I'll show you, because I think this is cool. See this button, add a feature request, you can't really see it. But if you click on this, and I'll answer your point, you get a pop-up with a, add, a, add a feature. So you can say, I want internal pro communication, private. And then you go and see below, these are, we had 647 feature requests. <laughs> and you can see the votes. So for example, this one, 24 votes. Search, of course. <laughs> it's not stupid, right? It's just that we can't do everything. And it's a big challenge to build it in the open like this, because people are like, it's obvious. Why did you guys not build search? They're like, well, I have five engineers. You know, let us deliver. So uh, internal is very high on the list, like a private conversation. And I think it's a natural. Um, because there will be, so I don't know, let me give you some example. There will be dating in this. You don't want to date, you know, in public. There is already some, like, people talking to each other. And it's very fun because it's like worldwide dating, right? Somebody at the other part of the world. And then you want a direct video. Uh, I'm a strong believer on the communities being, like, internal. Like, uh, uh, I don't know, you could have a conversation for, like, we have a dinner I, I went to, which is a, only startup guys in, in here uh, talking about their problems. And so like they exchange everything in the open. You can't put this in public. Like I, I, I explained a few of my problems. And uh, like hiring engineers, for example, this could be shared. But like management with uh, managing VCs, for example, can't really be shared much. So it's coming. And we'll add this as a, when you post a video. Uh, I, I can't do it because I have no webcam connected here. But if you go here, you see it says, uh, uh, your camera is not here, of course, but it says uh, title, language, and uh, update or not my Twitter. We'll add privacy. Is it private or not for your group, for your family, like on, on Flickr? And um, uh, then we'll add also the uh, Creative Commons license. Do you want to share it? Do you want to keep it for you? Do you want to uh, uh, allow us to use it with shows? And we'll share revenues with the people. I'm trying to, what I'm trying to build is an open source kind of way of, an open, of a TV channel, which uh, people around the world participate to create a show. 
and it's already a little bit starting. We edit them, and when we get advertisers, which I hope will happen, we'll share with the people doing the show. Like we have a JetBlue hostess called Molly, she's not a hostess, an employee, called Molly Berry, and she's famous already. We have, you know, like our uh, uh, seismic stars already uh, showing up. But yeah, we need private for the groups. Uh, you had one. So could you, could you speak a little bit more about this, this enormous step of coming from, from Europe to here? What are, what are some of the challenges? You said already, like, you know, networking, so, you know, hiring people, for instance. Yes, um, that's the biggest one. Maybe, I don't know, Leo or something else. Like, you had a very creative way of dealing with, with networking. What else was there that, you know, that was, that was a problem? Um, so hiring is one. And honestly, I mean, my video, if you look, the first one is very, very honest. I was like. Will anybody work for me here? You know, it's like, because you don't know, right? And so, um, especially there is so much competition. So that was number one challenge. There is one thing which was not a challenge, um, and it makes me think I should make a post on the differences between Europe and here, because there are many. It looks the same. It looked to me the same, very similar, and it's so different. One is access to the people. Another one is trust. So access to the people is, I feel like here it's very easy to access, to reach somebody and meet somebody, extremely easy. Whereas try to meet like, I don't know, the head of Orange in France. Go ahead, you know, and fight. <laughs> you'll wait, I can tell you. And you'll, even if you have the right friends and so on, the reputation, it's gonna, it's gonna take time. Because I don't know, there is like this. And here, what I like is you get 10 minutes maybe, and you have your chance, right? And then you have to have a reason for that. But you may get it. I mean, it's, it's quite, uh, it's much easier. Each time I tried, I never had a, a problem with this. A challenge I had was uh, reputation. So I, I, I don't, you know, like I have my background in Europe. It followed me, and thanks to the internet, like blogging for five years, uh, Wikipedia pages on me helped. Of course, when you Google me, you'll find stuff. But I am not known here. See what I mean? It's like it's not as easy. So it happened to me that I requested an appointment actually. And somebody said, well, why don't you, you know, like send your CV first or who are you, basically? That happened to me. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm full of shit because I, you know, I think I'm somebody or, or something else. But, or, but you see my point, like in Europe, it's much easy. It, and, but if you pass this step, that's easy. Trust um, is very different with Europe. The trust in Europe, by default, I think you start at zero trust. You have zero. You are, you're nobody, you're an intern, you're like, and, and it takes you five years to earn the trust of a company like Peugeot, for example, the car manufacturer, uh, or I don't know, you know, France Telecom. And when you have it, then you really have it. I mean, I, it's, uh, uh, I'm quoting Peugeot because they were my first customer in my first company. And friends of mine joke at me saying, if you start today a meat shop, they would buy meat, you know, because they have so much trust. And that's important. Here, you start with, I think, maximum trust. Like by default, you're somebody cool and okay, and, and people trust you. And then if you break anything, you're done. I don't know if you correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my feeling. By default, you have a lot of trust. You can meet people, you can reach them, you can do things with them. And if you screw up, then the world goes out very fast as well. So it's different, it's opposite right? on, the, on the trust uh, thing. And, uh, that I like very much, because it's easy. Well, so that challenge, now I start to have some trust, but uh, videos helped a lot. Like this uh, engineer, hiring an engineer here, you know, who am I? Really nobody, right? And that French entrepreneur, well, you know, he watched the videos and saw what we do, thought it was exciting. Who had, who had an, another question? You had one, and then you? Yeah. Yeah. I understand the difference between Europe and uh, here, but um, I just want to know, uh, what makes you um, take your plane ticket in terms of timing? Or, because I remember you on French TV at lunchtime. Oh. You have a network, you have a specific school in France, and uh, you have built many things. Yes. What makes you, at a specific time, take your plane ticket? So, and, um, yeah, it's a good question. When? And so I've, I've been, I had this in my mind for, this is why it's uh, such a pleasure really to, uh, are we kicked out? No? Okay. It's, this is such a pleasure to be here because that's part of, you know, like the, you know, I guess why you applied and were taken here is also you have this dream of, you know, Larry and Sergey building Google here and so on. I, I share this dream. And uh, 
I have, uh, this is why I'm so happy, thank you Roman for taking me here, because you're like, you know, you're getting me a little bit of Stanford, so that's cool. But I think the, I had this in mind for 10 years, but then you need some, something that, so the answer is this dinner with Niklas, right? And oh, many things actually. So during the dinner with Niklas, Nik, Skype is global, such a success, right? But if you think about all European leaders, internet, I don't know about the rest, they're all American, almost. Think about, and I'll come back to your point, but think about, so, search. We had our Yahoo's and Google's of Europe. They're all gone. Uh, E-commerce. We had Kelku, built by a friend, mm -hmm. Pierre Chapaz, sold to Yahoo. It's American. Uh, auctions. We had tons of auction sites, you know, Auckland, I mean, I don't name them. All gone. eBay, right? The, could go on forever. Lastminute.com. It's not only French, it's in... Europe as a whole, lastminute.com, Brent Oberman built this huge travel site, uh, equivalent to like what, Travelocity. Uh, it's Saber who bought it, right? There is only one guy <laughs> remaining, I'm a board member, at Mythic. It's a dating site, it's huge, 22 countries. Um, I think he does 150 or 200 million in revenue. He's almost the size of match.com. And Mark Simoncini does this because he says, uh, well, first he got rich, so he can, you know, like uh, not, uh, he can resist to a sale. He doesn't have to sell his company, if you see what I mean. And uh, Mythic is, in, uh, is a European leader and he says, I'm going to buy American companies. Right? He's very, he's the only one. I mean, <laughs> and so that's why I'm so happy to be a board member at him because like, it's the only internet company that didn't sell or wasn't killed. And that may, it's, he started acquiring people in China and so he's, he's very, very uh, big. But is an exception. And uh, when it, Skype, I gave shit to Niklas and Janus about that, right? I mean, they, they are the European model of we can do something global, and then they sell to eBay. So it's not European anymore. And during this dinner, I was like, well, if I do this here again, as much as I like France and I supported the French president, I was in his team, I gathered a thousand bloggers behind him. He won, and then I leave. <laughs> it's like logical, right? <laughs> and uh, I wanted this company to success. So at least this won't be a, a barrier, a, a problem. Um, and that was a tipping point in May. And I thought, then I, I met, I was in Davos last year, uh, and uh, which, if you're interested, I will be video blogging in two weeks from the World Economic Forum. And we wait. <laughs> and um, um, in Davos, I bumped into Richard Branson. That makes me, I know, but it's true. And I bumped into him and I said, look, you know, why are you not in politics? With everything you've done and, you know, why are you still, you know, and he says, you're stupid or what? You know, you, you, you have to understand politicians don't change the world. So that made me think about, you know, going into too much of politics or not. So I stopped. And then he said, your problem with France is you speak French. Well, yeah, uh, you have too much French. You're talking only to 60 million people, so it's a big chat, actually a little more with Quebec and so on, but Belgium, but it's like, and, and that's your problem, you should move. And he was very strong with me saying, move, you should move. Uh, and so he made me, you know, completely, and so that was the other tipping point. He says, that's your problem, move to London or to Silicon Valley. And those two were influent enough for me to say, okay. You should stop here because okay. Cool. All right. Oh, that's the class. Well, thank you very much. Just to finish with Romain, if you want to, I'd love to, if you want to test Sismic and help maybe, uh, I'd love uh, it, of course. Uh, please email me because it's by invite and there are 15,000 people if you, if you want to. Thank you very much for your time.